that is the opioid crisis in America. Opioids were involved in the overdose deaths of more than 33,000 Americans just in 2015, more than any other year on record, according to new data from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. This comes as Brayburn Pharmaceuticals develops an implant to address the challenges addicts face while maintaining treatment. Joining us right now is the CEO of Brayburn Phar Pharmaceuticals, and she is CEO Beshad. Sheldon, Bishad, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Good morning. Characterize the opioid crisis for us and tell us about this implant and how it works. Uh, the crisis, as you say, is taking um, the lives of uh, 33,000 Americans each year. We are losing the battle at this point. It is an epidemic. At Braeburn, we're trying to bring innovation to the treatment of, of opioid addiction so that we can help make a dent. Um, and this tiny implant is our first product. Uh, it was approved by the FDA last year. Um, it goes under the skin. Four of them go under the skin in the upper arm and lasts for six months, delivering buprenorphine at a steady blood level for the entire time so that the patient doesn't have cravings and doesn't have to worry about taking the medicine, doesn't have to worry about chasing it, uh, running after it, having it be stolen or lost, um, and really feel like they can focus on the rest of their life. Can I see that? Sure. Yeah, wow. Okay. So Go what, what exactly is this medicine that this produces? Right. Um, it contains buprenorphine. Um, in uh, the opioid uh, addiction treatment, we have three medicines that have been proven um, over and over. Studies have shown that medication as part of an overall treatment in treating opioid addiction reduces morbidity and mortality by 85%. And buprenorphine is a gold standard medicine that's contained in this um, implant called probufine. Um, it's our first innovation. We have a whole kind of pipeline of innovations coming. We have uh, a weekly and a monthly shot. Um, also for um, opioid addiction to, uh, that contain buprenorphine uh, so that we can treat patients from the day they start um, treatment to when they're much more stable when they're candidates for uh, the implant. So what's the alternative uh, from a maintenance program? If, if you're not doing this, then you're taking pills regularly and it's up to the patient to decide whether or not they want and they can sort of fall off the wagon, if you will, more Exactly. Easily. You have to take the choice every single day whether you're taking your medicine or not. And because this is such an unforgiving disease, one mistake can kill you. So that one day where they don't take their medicine for a couple of days and then they go out that could be the overdose that unfortunately what, ends their life. What is the price difference between this implant and the actual dosage you would get over the same period of time, over the same, say, six-month period? And are the insurance companies and Medicare and Medicaid covering it yet? Insurance companies, by and large, are covering at this point. Um, the people who are the thought leaders in industry, like Cigna, they completely understand the data and the value that treating an opioid addiction patient uh, brings mm -hmm. to them. For every dollar they spend, they can get seven to twelve dollars back. Um, and so those those folks get it. Um, not everybody does, and we need everyone in the in the insurance industry to get behind making sure patients have access to the most innovative um, uh, medicines available, um, so that can, we can keep people safe and we can uh, try and make a dent in this epidemic. Big, bigger picture: What are your prescriptions for fixing healthcare problems in this country? Um, that's definitely a big picture. Uh, I think we have to make sure that um, what, however we administer uh, the benefits, whether it's through the states or overall from the federal standpoint, that essential benefits like mental health and opioid uh, or, or abuse problems in, in general, addiction problems, which are currently essential benefits, are maintained, whether it's at the state level or not. Because, again, if we don't treat these kinds of problems um, at the beginning, um, and you know, obviously it would be better to even prevent them, um, but if we don't treat them, the cost to society when someone who has opioid addiction ends up getting HIV or hepatitis C um, are far greater. Uh, so we are better off making sure that patients have access uh, to the most innovative products, and um, that's what we're working towards, bringing as many of these to patients I as mean, quickly as possible. Are doctors prescribing opioids too much? I mean, is that part of the issue? Do you need to have a broader conversation with doctors to try to not have so much uh, prescription around opioids. Isn't that where it starts? That's certainly part of the conversation. Um, we, if we want to point a finger, point it at the disease because you can point yeah. it at doctors, at pharma companies, at all, all bunch of different places, but the disease is really um, what we have to try to battle. We have to uh, take care of the two and a half million patients who um, are afflicted with the disease of opioid addiction today. Um, and of course, in the future, there are 
uh, different strategies, including lowering opioid prescriptions and teaching children from the beginning how to deal with stress, um, building brain resiliency so that um, they will not fall into trying to self-medicate with whatever is around. Yeah, what do you think, Mitch? Well, it's interesting, sort of back to the question Jack had asked. As a senior executive in the pharma industry, do you feel that you have a voice in talking to the administration and to, to Congress about the repeal and replace of Obamacare, or do you feel like they're sort of doing what they're doing without hearing from stakeholders in your industry? Certainly some of the advisors um, to the administration um, have reached out. Um, I was on a panel with um, Chris Christie last year on opioid addiction in New Jersey, um, and I know that his office is very interested in, in figuring out how, uh, as the part of the over, overall health care plan, we can be um, tackling the, the problem of opioid addiction better. I, I still am curious how much more the implant costs versus like a six-month supply of the... Um, buprenorphine. Yeah, because the, the, the there has to be a price. To sure, the, there is a price to innovation always, right. um, and um, while the, the price per day is higher, um, what we've done in terms of making sure that everyone understands the benefit um, is analyses on what will happen if you um, take the uh, clinical data and extrapolate it. Um, and payers are seeing that by reducing the number of overdoses, by reducing the um, uh, number of uh, cases of accidental exposure to children, um, you can actually reduce your overall costs. Um, and so they look at value rather than um, the, the, the price for uh, a single day uh, and a single milligram of buprenorphine. Uh, we also, of course, have copay assistance programs um, to help patients with um, the part that they, they need to be providing. Really important work that you're doing, Bishad. Thanks so much for joining us. Tell us about it. Thank you so much. We appreciate it very much. Bishad Sheldon there. Uh